Well, 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 I wasn't expecting Bella Westwood's childhood bully, Kendra Smith, to have a thing for humiliation, because impulsively kissing the girl you've been bullying for the past some decade in a fit of passion is crazy. So, Kendra has a thing for Bella. And she kissed her, and Bella Loki liked it, but mostly, she hated it, hated it. Kendra was despicable. There's no way that she could ever forgive her for the reign of terror she had on her elementary school life. However, after finding out Kendra's dark secret, and seeing her be so apologetic for her past, Bella couldn't help but think the whole thing over, wondering if she should let Kendra off the hook for everything. Meanwhile, all the way in Brightchester, our heir Rosalie Bastianich was completely unaware of everything going on back at home. After Saturday night's party and the death of her dorm mate April, she became laser focused on her academic responsibilities, using her Sunday and Monday morning to finish up her essays that she'd been procrastinating on, as well as her class presentation. Um, who the hell are you? And why did you just waltz into Rosalie's room like that? Oh my god, all you dudes are the same. Disgusting and desperate. After Rosalie kicked her creepy doll mate out, I heard some very odd noises coming from downstairs. Rosalie's friend, Kimberly Petty, is watching the sim version of Brokeback Mountain on the downstairs TV. Absolutely shameless, and now there's a ghost in Rosalie's dorm, and she's practicing her presentation with them. Well, at the very least, it's not the ghost of Joseph. Rosalie headed out for class, feeling excited to be wrapping up the last few days of her first term. It officially ended tomorrow, Rosalie catching a plane back to Windenburg the evening of. So excited to see her family family again, especially her mum Gwyneth, but she knew exactly what going back home meant. Starting the wedding planning with her fiancé, Finley Broke, who she hadn't seen since Friday, and had barely spoken to all weekend. And since they had plans to meet at the park today after classes, she knew that was something he was going to want to talk about. It was all getting so real, in less than to sim weeks. She would be a married woman, she'd have a husband, she would have to live by the societal rules of marriage life and kiss her single life goodbye forever. To Rosalie's surprise, the first thing Finley talked about had nothing to do with their upcoming nuptials. He actually mentioned how he was feeling really funny downstairs all day. So he went on over to the doctor, Rosalie waiting for him patiently in the park, her passing time by trying the skating rink out, sim watching, and calling her mummy Gwyneth, talking about their mutual excitement for Rosalie's return tomorrow evening. Finley got back to the park soon after, sharing the bad news with his girl. He had a yeast infection. Yeah, that better be all you have. My heart dropped thinking you cheated on my girl. Welp, that meant no woo who tonight. They were both a bit bummed, mainly Rosalie, but that was fine. She just wanted him to get better. They were feeling peckish, so they headed over to one of the food stands to buy a pizza to share. And that's exactly when Finley brought up the topic she was dreading. The wedding, they went right back to where they left off, picking a day after the second turn to get married. He wanted to make sure this was something she was 100% down to do. Oh, you totally bet she was. They then decided discussed wedding venues, the guest list, the color scheme. Finley was thinking they can go back to Tartosa, or the countryside in Windenburg, or maybe the park in Ciudad in Amaraga. Maybe the color scheme can be black and red, both of their favorite colors, and Rosalie agreed with everything Finley was saying, smiling through the pain. Luckily for Rosalie, she had no choice but to cut their wedding conversation short. She had plans to go to the Spice Festival in San Michuno with an old friend from high school, Neelish Randolph, who she ran into yesterday in her dorm. Finley was free to come along. Neelish, Rosalie's blue-haired friend from high school, one of the few boys that never tried to hit on her. Once he saw him again, Finley did in fact remember Neelish, and he'd always thought of him fondly. The three of them had a lot to catch up on. The reason why Rosalie was so interested in catching up with Neelish again is because he is soulmates with Courtney James's sister, J. 
Johanna Britton. The pair had been going steady for years, and she wanted to hear all about their relationship. Neelish was super interested in Rosalie's and Finley's relationship as well. He saw them go to prom together, but never realized they were dating. But once he saw that red rock on Rosalie's finger, he corrected himself. They were engaged. No way, because he just proposed to Johanna last week. Oh god, this is exactly what Rosalie was trying to avoid, talking about weddings. Seems like she jinxed herself, because once Neelish had said that, Finley was really interested in his conversation with him. Finally, another couple who were getting married young. It seemed to be so rare nowadays. Yes, Neelish and Johanna were engaged, already planning their new crest wedding. He was so excited to be with the love of his life forever. And Finley said that was exactly how he felt about Rosalie. Rosalie was so annoyed, she came here for a good time, not to be bombarded with incessant wedding talk. So she sipped on her drinks intently and tried her best to dissociate from the conversation. And that's when she spotted something that could really help her, a bubble blower tucked away in the corner of the festival. After Finley took a quick piss, the trio headed on over to the machine, but not to blow bubbles. They were thinking something more herbal. Seems like the festival was getting ready to end. So they sat and laughed and puffed on their oregano for the remainder of the festival. They reminisced about high school, talked shit about their old classmates, uncaught each other up on the latest gossip. And that's when Neelish brought up the poor girl that died on Friday at a bright Chester house party named April. Finley hadn't heard anything about that. A student died on campus. Yes, Neelish told him, right on school campus. She was so embarrassed that she quite literally dropped dead in front of everyone. It was terrible to see. And that's when Neelish remembered. He saw Rosalie at the party. Oh girl, you're in some deep shit. Finley was confused, very confused. Rosalie told him that she was staying home to study. And Neelish just couldn't imagine how the host, Maximilian Fontaine, is feeling right now. Hold up, Maximilian Fontaine, the finance bro that Finley literally hates, hosted the party. Rosalie didn't even know he hosted it, let alone him being there. Now, she really knew she was in the trenches of shit. She was really regretting inviting Finley to hang out with Neelish now. Because she knew once they get to the dorms, something was going to happen between the two of them. She went to the bathroom as Finley waited on her bed, her trying to keep calm. She knew he knew. There was no point in lying to him again. She shouldn't have even lied to him in the first place. Things were going so wrong for her. She thought she was good at communicating with him. Why was everything so difficult now? She came out of the bathroom in her cutest new lingerie. She knew they couldn't woo her. But she was hoping that her hotness would distract him from the pending questions in his head. Of course, it didn't. Did she go to that party on Friday night? And instead of being honest with him like she should have, she diluted the truth. She was up here studying for most of the night. But once she was done, Kimberly asked her if she wanted to go. So, she went. Was he mad or something? Of course, Finley wasn't mad. She went to a party. He was confused why Rosalie didn't tell him. I mean, did she not trust him? Did she think that he would get mad at her? Rosalie said that she just didn't see why it was important to tell him. She only went for a few hours and he was asleep anyways. Why disturb him? But that wasn't the point. Finley said he's not going to control her and tell her what to do. He would never. But her not mentioning it at all, especially when it was hosted by Maximilian Fontaine, is very strange. Rosalie swore she didn't know Maximilian hosted it. She never even cried crossed paths with him. And besides, why did it matter who the host was? Did he not trust her around other guys or something? That was not what Finley was saying at all. He trusts her completely, but he doesn't trust Maximilian. The dude is weird. She had to admit it. He was in college hanging around a bunch of teenage girls. He's a creep. She has to understand why he was suspect of him. He just wanted to put this past them. But before he can do that, he wanted Rosalie to promise him to not withhold things from him, he tells her everything, always. He hoped she would trust him enough to do the same. Rosalie really didn't want to talk about this anymore, so she agreed to everything he asked for. She was sorry, and Finley said it was okay. He just wants them to always be honest with each other. Little did he know that was something Rosalie was far from perfecting.